Today we're installing Wine on Linux Mint 22, and the goal here is simple. We want a clean, reliable setup that behaves well long-term, not a quick hack that breaks after the next update. Wine, developed by WineHQ, is not an emulator and not a virtual machine. Instead, it works as a compatibility layer. When a Windows program asks for something from the operating system, Wine translates that request into something Linux understands. That's why Wine can feel fast and lightweight compared to running a full Windows environment. Before installing anything, we always start by making sure the system itself is in a good state. Updating the package list and installed software avoids dependency conflicts later. It's one of those boring steps that saves a lot of headaches down the road. Next comes an important detail that many people miss. Even on a modern 64-bit system, a lot of Windows applications still rely on 32-bit components. Games, older utilities, and even some newer installers expect them. So we explicitly enable multi-architecture support. This doesn't slow your system down or clutter it. It simply allows Wine to install what it needs when required. Once the system is ready, we move on to the Wine repository itself. Linux Mint is based on Ubuntu, and Wine provides official builds specifically designed for this family of distributions. Adding the official signing key ensures that the packages you install are authentic and haven't been tampered with. Adding the repository tells your system where to look for Wine updates in the future, so you don't have to manually reinstall anything later. After the repository is added, we refresh the package list again. This step is crucial because without it, your system won't see the newly available Wine packages. Now comes the actual installation. Wine offers several branches, but for most users, the stable branch is the best choice. It prioritizes reliability and broad compatibility. Development and staging builds can offer better performance or newer features, but they also change more frequently. For a daily-use Linux Mint system, stable is usually the smartest starting point. Once installation finishes, Wine isn't quite done yet. The first time you run it, Wine creates what's called a prefix. You can think of this as a mini Windows environment stored inside your home folder. This includes a virtual C drive, registry files, and configuration data. When you open Wine's configuration tool for the first time, it sets all of this up automatically. During this initial setup, Wine may ask your permission to install extra components like Mono or Gecko. These help with applications that rely on Microsoft's .NET framework or embedded web content. Installing them is recommended and improves compatibility for many programs. After that first configuration window appears, you're essentially done. Wine is installed, configured, and ready to use. From this point on, running a Windows program is as simple as opening an installer file or launching an executable through Wine. You can also revisit the configuration tool at any time to adjust graphics settings, Windows version compatibility, audio behavior, or drive mappings. These tweaks become useful later when you start running more complex software or games. At this stage, Linux Mint 22 now has a fully functional Wine setup using official sources, proper verification, and a clean configuration. It's stable, update-friendly, and ready for real use.